uh, hi everyone and welcome back and in the coming videos like five or six videos i'm going to talk primarily about react yes in starting 20 videos we talked about angular somewhat javascript we have done a lot of small small quiz about javascript about angular now we are moving totally into uh, react.js react.js interview questions and we are going to talk about a lot lot of interview questions in react.js so we will create a, a group of questions like in the in a particular video we will cover around 40 to 50 50 questions of react.js and we will try to cover all these questions in five and six videos okay so let's get started i mean this these questions are already available on my blog if you want to have a look look then you can just directly go to that link here I, i'm just going to talk one by one and i i will also add on my thoughts on these questions so what is react react is a view library a small uh, view library to create a user interface then what are the major features it provides a virtual dom it provides a server side rendering it provides a unidirectional data flow right it it helps us to create a complex ui by creating a reusable uh, ui components right what is a jsx jsx is xml like extension of uh, javascript extension so here we are writing html xml like syntax which react while compiling converting this html code into javascript because javascript can't contain html inside it so while compilation with the help of babel all these jsx which is xml html like syntax gets converted into javascript code uh, what is the difference between element and component element we are creating using react.create element whatever the code you are writing in jsx that indirectly getting converted into react.create element right wherever react.component i mean the component is a react component which can be a functional component or a class based component which will have uh, which then will be rendered on a particular dom node using react dom dot render okay how to create component in react either using functional component or either using class based component you will just use simple functions pass the props and render it you just need to return the jsx or you can also create it using classes you just class class name extends react dot component that need to have a render function uh, when to use class b class component over a functional component it, it's just uh, your requirement your approach now functional component are also powerful same as class based component so we should not be doing this kind of discrimination okay you should choose class based component or a functional component uh, because now functional component also has the hooks so whatever the features you were we were you were, you were building with the class based component now same things you can do with the functional component what are pure components pure component are same as the react component except it handles should component update method which actually determines when to render component if there is a state change or the new props are coming then only it re-renders the component right what is a state in react a state of a component is an object that holds some information and whenever it change we need to show or we need to re-render the component to show the change in the state on the ui so state can be initialized inside a constructor or it can be initialized using hooks in the functional component okay what are the props in react uh, props are input to a component it helps us to pass the data from parent to the child component okay props are immutable this is like a data you are just passing that data will be shown to the child component uh, like whenever you need to pass a custom data to your component uh, props triggers a state change and it can be accessed using this dot props dot data same as state can be accessed using this dot state dot data a state can be changed it will it will initiate re-rendering of a component props cannot be changed a new props can be passed but the existing props in child component cannot be updated difference between state and props which we just talked about how would you why should we not update the state directly 
so sometimes what we do is this dot set state object key property right obviously this we can't do this dot state dot message this is not allowed we can you can still do it like this this dot set state but this is also not advised you should always use a callback this dot set state x is the current state and based on the current state return the new state okay what is the purpose of callback function this is what i was talking about because callback is an asyn the state this dot set state function is asynchronous in the execution it's not like okay this dot set state and you return the json object it is asynchronous in nature and whenever you are doing a lot of uh, state change then you have to use this callback to access the current state and based on the current state you can return the the new state out of it okay so what is the purpose of callback function as an argument the callback function is invoked when set, set state is finished so it is talking about the second argument here sometimes what we want to do is once the state change is done we want to access the current state also right so if you write two statement on one line you have written this dot set state and the next line you are trying to call another method by passing the current updated state in that case you will not be able to get the current state so what you can do is you have to call that method in the callback because this callback will execute once the state change has done so this will make sure that you are getting the updated state what is the difference between html and react event handling uh, i mean in the html we are writing on click in the the lower case but here we are writing it in the camel case on click it's a camel case convention uh, you can return false to prevent a default behavior here you need to explicitly call event dot uh, prevent default okay how to bind the method or event handler in the jsx callback you can just do handle call handle click and you can do this dot handle click equal to this dot handle click dot bind or you can do a dot bind on the dom event handler itself okay or you can use arrow function now instead of doing a dot bind we can just simply write it like this okay using arrow function you don't need to write the bind if you're not doing a bind then you have to bind it inside a constructor by putting this line these are common questions which most of the react developer already know how to pass parameter to an event handler or a callback so we can pass it like this on click you can write arrow functions so whenever you do on click this id will be passed which is available in the jsx or you can also do it like this this dot handle click and bind this id to this function okay what are the synthetic events synthetic event is a cross browser wrapper around the browser's native event its api is same as the browser browser native event event including the stop propagation prevent default default except the events work identically across all the browsers so these are the synthetic events stop propagation event default common behavior across all the browsers so there are many questions what is the key props and what is the benefit of using it in array of elements so sometimes when we do the array dot map to render the jsx we always provide key as a unique property right so this is a unique identifier and this is required in the reconciliation process to identify the change in a particular DOM node because you are rendering the number of children and to refresh a particular children react uses this key property to identify where the change need to be applied okay so what is the use of reference reference is used to return the reference of the DOM element and you can actually access the current value or you can actually modify the the dom using the reference how to create refer reference simply like this here you provide reference and this dot my reference now you can actually access if this is input text field you can access the reference value this dot reference dot current value okay like this uh, here we have reference input search field okay and here i'm doing this dot text search text search is null and here whenever you are doing on change we are calling on input change method and updating the text search so what is the use of reference you can also use reference in the function component or as a closer you can also use initial reference callback 
I mean, mostly the reference is used to access the current value. So there is a use ref now that is also a hook for the functional component. The reference is used to access this particular node in the component. What are the forward reference? A reference forwarding is a feature that let some component take a reference they receive and pass it to the further to the down children. Okay, it's like a reference passing to downstream component. What is the preferred option with the callback reference or find a DOM node? So I think it's preferred way to use a callback reference our find DOM node API because find DOM node API is I think it's also deprecated maybe because we were using it earlier. Now we were using callback reference. Okay, what are Sting reference uh, legacy? Uh, this is not that important. Let's skip this. What is virtual DOM? Virtual DOM is an in-memory representation of real DOM. Okay, whenever you do some updates like state change, then the the change will happen in the uh, virtual DOM. Virtual DOM will identify what all nodes need to be updated on the actual DOM and it will apply it. Okay, so it's in memory DOM representation, it will do the changes, it will compare it with the actual DOM which is on the browser, it applies those changes on the actual DOM by doing the DOM manipulations in the optimal manner using optimal algorithm. What is the difference between shared DOM and virtual DOM? Shared DOM is a browser technology that is designed primarily for scoping of variables and CSS in the web components, which is heavily used in the Angular. The virtual DOM is a concept implemented by libraries on top of browser APIs. Okay. What is controlled? Controlled component, uncontrolled component. What is the difference between create element and a clone element? Uh, create element functions to create React element, which are going to be used for object representation on the UI. Clone element is used to clone an element and pass it to the new props and all these things. What is lifting of state up in React? If your two components are accessing the, the same state and you are individually defining the state there, instead of that, you create a parent component and put the state there. Okay, what are the different phases of component lifecycle? As we already know, these are divided into three parts, initialization, update, and unmount. React lifecycle methods are divided into two segments now like the older version or the latest version which are coming after 16.3 or 4 so it's known as like uh, initialization update and unmount lifecycle so we can actually see what are the lifecycle methods like you can see 16.3 and if i talk about 16.4 these are different lifecycle methods and I think it's not talking about the lifecycle methods we were having earlier which also having component will mount, component will receive props and component will update all these uh, different lifecycle methods which are now deprecated or unsafe to use. Uh, these are the latest ones like get derived state for, from props, uh, should component update if I talk about the, the common lifecycle methods then constructor render component did mount component did update these are mostly frequently used lifecycle methods okay what is the lifecycle methods now we can talk about all these things before react 16.3 we used to have component will mount component did mount component will receive props should component update component will update a lot of lifecycle methods right you can see the the whole list now with 16.3 we have added a few new lifecycle methods and removed few component will mount component will receive props and component will update now removed we have added get derived state from props get derived state from error and uh, get snapshot before update these are some of the new methods which has been added now component will mount component will receive props and component will updates are not available now what are higher order components? A higher order component is a function that takes another uh, component as input and return a new one. Like uh, if you talk about the connect in the Redux, React Redux, that takes uh, one component as a argument and returns a new component, right? HOC can be used in many cases, code reuse, render hijacking, state abstraction, props manipulation. This is the function. Higher order component is a component 
which is taking wrapper component as a as a function input and it returns to another component see what is the context context provides a way to pass data through the components without having without doing a prop drilling i mean once you create a context you can actually pass the you can actually access the data to any child component without doing a prop drilling from parent to child here we are creating a producer and consumer context producer and consumer okay so let's let's close it here we will cover the next uh, questions react js react js interview questions in the coming videos i hope you like it you can go to this link and uh, you can just explore the react js interview questions which are most popular i mean i will not say that these are the only interview questions react is vast and there are a lot of changes coming up in react the the earlier version 15.x then we have 16.456 and now new features keep getting added if you are writing react code day and night i mean every day then you might be familiar with what all new changes are coming up what all new hooks are there how to manage the the state by the either by using the react with redux or either just by using hooks use state use effect use reducer use context all these hooks which are more popular now to manage the state to manage the data for react components okay uh, thanks everyone thank you very much